Hey, what's up guys, Bobo Rail here, and today I'm once again going to be breaking down the newest dev post for the upcoming World War 1 FPS game, Isanzo. So to start, I have a pretty important disclaimer. The game, which was originally scheduled to launch quarter 4 of 2021, has now been pushed back to quarter 1 of 2022. Now, honestly, I'm very happy they did this because too many times have I seen tactical shooters hype everyone up for a game only to pull it out from under them only a few weeks before release. These devs seem to be very open with their communication, while still keeping enough under wraps to build hype. Either way, next year isn't that much longer of a wait, so I'm glad to give the game a bit more time if it means we'll get a more complete product at launch. Business talk aside, today's post is all about things that go boom giving us greater detail on the rifle grenades we saw from the first trailer, as well as showing off some other familiar weapons and gadgets. But let's start with these rifle grenades because they're going to be the newest addition to the game. In game, you'll be able to pick the rifle grenades with your loadout. I would assume this is class specific, and you'll be able to equip those grenades by pressing the 5 key on PC, and probably a d-pad button on console, but they didn't confirm that. Having a rifle grenade equipped will disable you from having a bayonet, which I appreciate both from a practical and balancing perspective. And as you can see from the video here, the rifle grenades have some really intense drop, which while still obviously more effective than throwing a normal grenade, these still have their range limitations, so no cross map spawn killing like it's Modern Warfare 2. There will be at least two different types of rifle grenade, number one, the Italian Bengalia rifle grenade, and number two, the Austro-Hungarian Zeitzunder. So both factions will have access to these guns. Oh, and also, sorry in advance for any bad pronunciation. Alright, so now we have Isanzo's model for the Hungarian Frommerstop. This is a gun that's already in Tannenberg, and it performs as a normal semi-auto pistol with a 7-shot mag. So really good for pushing trenches or providing suppression for your squad while advancing. Generally, it's a really good offensive weapon in Tannenberg, so I imagine it will perform similarly in Isanzo. Next, they show off some binoculars, which are another class-specific choice they mentioned being restricted to officers and the Mountaineer class. I'm not gonna lie, in the previous two titles, binoculars were kind of useless, partly because of the gameplay structure and partly because I feel the sensitivity ramping when using them was a bit much on console, and the FOV was also very limited. But I personally expect that to change with Isanzo, because with the more objective-based gameplay that I covered in the fourth dev blog breakdown, as well as the introduction of on-map artillery, intel will be much more important, and could potentially change the tide of a whole match. So now for the last bit, there isn't any guessing game this week, but they did confirm I was right on my guess last week, being the Hebel 1894 flare gun. Now they also said they won't reveal the functionality of these flare guns yet, but if I had to guess it's likely for the squad leader or officer role to call in some kind of support. Maybe that bomber we saw in the reveal trailer? Like I said though, we'll learn later and that's just a guess. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you all enjoyed this week's dev blog breakdown. Sorry, I know it's a day or so late. I just got back to school studying video editing, and I was a little preoccupied with some other projects. Either way, this has been Bobo Rail. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I'll catch you all in the next one.